All right, everyone. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jason Levine, and it's very nice to see you uh, today on the Masterclass, where we're going to be talking about something that, um, <laughs> well, I've talked about in other streams, and it's funny, I keep getting questions about this, particularly as people start shooting in different aspect ratios and have been kind of struggling with ways to create proxies or just ingest presets which typically involve using some kind of smaller, lower resolution version of a file um, without, without it looking different after you make the proxy or the ingest preset. Now, in the latest version of Premiere Pro CC 2020, updated as of, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, we've actually made, well, we made some changes a, a short while ago just to make it easier. You used to have to choose the proxy based on resolution. So if you're not on the, on the most current version, some of the things I'll show you may may look a little different. And it was a lot more difficult to make a, an ingest or proxy preset and have it work properly previously. We've kind of simplified that, but I but there's still a slightly convoluted way that you have to make the proxy preset. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And this allows you to choose any codec you want, any particular uh, uh, file format, any particular frame size, and you can define the frame size. And along the way, you also have the ability to add things like overlays so that you know that you're working in proxies. One of the really wonderful things about our, our proxy workflow is that it's a single click button to enable the proxy, the low res version, and then to click back to the high res version. There's no relinking. There's no huge process involved. And because of that, sometimes it, it can be difficult to know what you're, what you're scrubbing with, what you're editing with. So I'm going to take you through all of that and uh, hopefully you'll find this a little more intuitive. And uh, kind of once you learn the process, it's easy-ish. Now, this may change in a little while because we've heard you. But for now, this is the way that you're going to do it. So as always, we're coming to you live on Behance, YouTube, and Twitter Periscope. So thank you so much for watching. If you want to follow the chat, want to be a part of the chat, the live conversation, I'm reading the chat over at behance.net slash Adobe Live. So I highly encourage you to go over there. And as always, love to give a couple of shouts, see who's in today. I am Thor. Hello. How's it going? Cal, how are you? Comic Sans, nice to see you. Cody, always great to see you. Steve, Festus Kossaboom, always great. Eddie Garcia, what's up? So nice. And we've got Donald Ping coming to us over on the other YouTubes. Nirmal Kumar, great to see you. And coming over to us live over on Twitter Periscope, we've got Bob and Rivaldi and Dan and Mallory and James. So thank you so much for joining. Okay, so we're going to get started right away here. Let's go ahead and uh, switch over. I'm going to switch my screen over here. Uh, and actually, yeah, I'll start, I guess I'll start kind of in Premiere just momentarily. And then we can kind of go through the, the, uh, the larger workflow for doing this. Now, this is not something that everybody is going to do. And just to kind of give you a little bit of context here, because that's what these master classes are all about. Why do you want to use a lower resolution version of your media, right? So the basic concept and the reason why it's been done traditionally is, and particularly today where, you know, the standard on your phone is 4K, if you're editing on anything other than a slightly more powerful system, it doesn't really matter what NLE you're in. If you're working with kind of compressed media in particular, right? You're shooting on your iPhone or Samsung, you're creating H.264 or H.265 files. This is compressed media. It has to, it has to decompress on playback that's not the right word. And it can slow things down. It can be kind of clunky. In particular, MP4s, they're just not the best editing format. They really weren't designed to be an editing format. They were designed to be a, a, a playback delivery format for the web. So if you're trying to run 4K MP4 files, UHD 3840 by 2160, on a, you know, a slightly older laptop, you, you, you might get a little frustrated. That's not to say you always will. That's not to say you ever will. But it can happen. Now, as I mentioned on a stream a week or two ago, and many of you are well, well aware, of course now 8K is becoming an even more common standard. Canon announced their new uh, R5 camera, standard 8K. Blackmagic introduced, or is soon to introduce, their 12K camera. So, you know, media storage aside, working in those those sizes, it's just going to be, it's, it's just going to be nuts. And 
I think for peace of mind, and if you really want to stay in that creative zone, you're ultimately going to want, not even have to, but you're going to want to use smaller, lightweight versions of these of this media just to do your cutting. Granted, when you're doing your color correction and other things that require pixel precision, sure, you can always click back and forth. And again, I'll show you that here very quickly to kind of see what those master files look like. But in the case of something like a 12K file or more, you know, or even 8K for that matter, I mean, it, that that's a very heavy load to try and process all those pixels at once particularly on a laptop. So that's why we're doing this. And the same goes for an intermediate codec or an ingest preset. It doesn't have to necessarily be a proxy. It can just be a file format that you want to work in. And then again, you can kind of hand off an offline edit and they can relink to masters later on. There's lots of different ways to leverage this, lots of terminology that all kind of means the same thing. I'm going to show you how to do this. So we're going to start with some footage, which was shot by my friend, Mike Burton. We've seen his film a couple times here on the stream. Century. And uh, all of this content uh, is R3D. Now, here I am inside of our media browser here. And again, I love using the media browser. You can see I've got the, the frame zoomed up. So we're looking at native R3D files here. Remember that we've got hover scrubbing. So as I hover my mouse over it, you can see exactly what's inside the content there. All right. Uh, similarly, for all these clips, kind of just see what's going on in here. Now, the reason I pulled up this particular footage, and there's some really beautiful shots here with some just really lovely detail. Go ahead and uh, I'm going to import this into my project for a moment. All right. The reason I wanted to showcase this particular footage was because while initially I was like, oh, I wonder if is this 4K or 5K? Well, this kind of speaks to that this is not your standard 16.9 footage. So if I, I'm going to right click here and go into properties. And just real quickly, so you're going to see here, it's a red R3D RAW file. So again, now I'm working on a three and a half year old iMac 5K. It can handle this footage, but note the image size. So, you know, this, I, I'm assuming this is, um, yeah, this is 5K here, shot on the Mysterium, 4800 by 2700. So this is not your standard 16.9 footage that, you know, if you're working in UHD or 1080p or 720p that you're used to. So one of the things that people used to encounter when they would try and just randomly use some of our standard um, proxy presets, well, we didn't have anything that conformed to this particular um, ratio. So you'd either wind up with something that was letterboxed or pillar boxed or sometimes squashed because maybe the aspect ratio altogether was wrong. We've really simplified that process. But first and foremost, knowing the resolution of the media you're working with is kind of important. And it's only important if you want to build custom ingest or proxy presets, all right? So we're going to keep in mind this is 4,800 by 2,700, all right? Now, I've also got some footage that I just shot with the iPhone here just a couple of minutes ago. Um, you know, nothing nothing fancy, nothing <laughs> a little overblown. Just I, I just grabbed a light because it's, you know, kind of dark in here. Let's go ahead and do the same. We're going to import this one, all right? And on this footage here, if we take a look at this, let's go into properties. Uh, and again, this is exactly what I was just saying. So first and foremost, this is coming off of the iPhone. Now, this was shot actually in Filmic Pro. This one, I was shooting uh, in a, in a uh, what was it, like a 2.25 aspect ratio here. So it's taking the iPhone footage, which is UHD, and it's actually creating a letterbox version at 3840 by 1606. 24 frames per second, 1.0 pixel aspect ratio. Again, it's still H.264. Um, it's technically coming up as VFR here. And if you kind of just look at this for a second, uh, let's pull up, pull this away. All right. Notice that it's it's significantly wider than you're probably used to seeing, right? So if we were to take this and let's say place it into a standard, whoops, what am I doing? Sorry. If we were to take this and place it into a standard uh, UHD sequence, let's go ahead and do that. To make a new sequence here. I'm just going to change my settings. Let's go into custom. All right. And I'm going to make this 3840 by 2160, right? Because it's going to be presented as UHD 16.9 on YouTube, but it'll have that, that letterboxing, that real cinematic kind of look. That's how it was shot. That's what I want to preserve. Okay. I'm not going to worry about video previews for now. Time base is 24. All right, all that's good. Click OK on this. 
Let's take this footage and drag it in there. Now it's going to ask me if I want to change the sequence setting. So do I want my sequence to be 3840 by 1600? No, I want it to be UHD. I'm going to keep the existing settings. And now you can see, let me just mute the uh, audio here. You can see the letterboxing on there, you know, and that's intentional. So if I'm going to create a proxy for this, I want it to maintain that exact same aspect ratio, that exact same look. I don't want it to squeeze it or try and fill the frame or do anything weird because I want to know exactly what it is that I'm working with. And there's that old S612 sampler that we played a couple, I'm trying to get focus on here. <laughs> as long as pulling focus on the iPhone is a little challenging. Um, that we were playing the Strawberry Fields, my, my Strawberry Fields Mellotron flutes from this device a couple of weeks ago. And this is, again, this is 1986. Look at this, look at this old technology, knobs, soft, uh, what were these called? Membrane, membrane style buttons. You actually hear this little when you depress them. And this is how you edited. There was this little two slider splicer on there and you'd listen for the loop point. And if you heard a click, you'd adjust the beginning and the end or you could loop it from the middle. <laughs> you could have it alternate or manually splice it. it was, it's cool, it's old school. All right, so again, we're not working in kind of the standard 16.9 frame size that we're always used to. And if you use the old preset ways to do that, you'd end up with something a little wonky. All right. So let me show you first how we've made this a little bit easier without customizing or doing anything. All right. So if I just want to use a super low res but lightweight version of this, I can simply right click on this footage and I'm going to go into proxy create proxies, all right? Just like that. And when I go into create proxies, this is what the menu looks like. Now, this is what I was discussing before. If you are working in, I don't, I don't even remember when we changed this, but certainly if you're working in CC 2019 or something from at least a year ago, I, I think this has been here at least six to eight months. I, I forget, we're doing so many updates now, it's hard for me to keep track. You've got two formats that you can select here. Now, as mentioned, you can use H.264 if you want. It's really up to you. To be honest, I edit in H.264 a lot, usually when it's iPhone footage, and I usually don't even bother transcoding it. All my, all my offspring stuff, you know, that's 4K iPhone. I didn't transcode it. He didn't transcode it. He edited it. I just kind of sweetened it. So it's all native. Again, I don't typically recommend creating proxies in H.264. It's just not, it's not going to be super lean and you could involve, you could add little hiccups to your editing and it could just frustrate you. Try it, see how it goes. So I'm going to choose QuickTime, the only other option here. Now, under this, we have presets. Now, before, this is where you saw ProRes, LT, 1280 by 720, ProRes, uh, 422, 960 by, it had all these specific resolutions. And I think there was even like a 1540 by something in there. And if you didn't exactly know what your footage was, you might just go, oh, I'm going to choose a 1280 by 720. But that ratio doesn't match the footage that I created, that I shot. So it wouldn't look right. And we heard you all and you all thought that stunk. And it was very confusing. And yes, we had to make it better. So if you haven't gone in this dialogue in a while, we've now simplified this. So let's go into ProRes low resolution proxy. All right, and you'll see you've got Cineform options here and DNX options here as well. I'm just gonna choose ProRes low resolution proxy. Tell it where you want it to go. I always like to keep it next to the original media just to keep things clean. All right, and click OK. And what's going to happen is if I click over to Media Encoder, you can already see it's processing. It is now rendering out that proxy in the background. And here where you see it says offline, there it goes. It's now attached. So you can start editing right away with your native media. This is kind of one of the really nice, brilliant things about this. And there's, there's no time loss to you whatsoever. Now, the way that you engage that proxy is via this button right here. And if I hover over it, you'll see it says toggle proxies. Now, if you don't have that there, you can click the plus sign here and you'll find that inside of your button editor. And you're simply gonna drag this from the panel down into your buttons that you want. Notice I took a lot of my buttons off. I don't think I've ever in 20 years used these extract, lift, or overwrite buttons. Ever, I don't think I've ever used, may, may, maybe, ex no, <laughs> no, I don't think so. Super clean, all right? 
Let's drag it down there. Okay. So as I mentioned, when it's gray, now we're looking at native media. When it's blue, now we're looking at proxy media. But how do I know? It kind of looks the same. And because I'm fitting the video into my little window right here, I don't really see a, I mean, you, you can slightly see it if you're really paying attention. You probably can't see it over the stream. It's almost, it's almost, Im you can't really perceive the difference. So how can you perceive the difference? Well, if we go up to 100%, gray is in full, you know, that's, that's our full resolution media. Now, if I click toggle proxy, ah, look at that. Smeared, pixelated, looks like a bad JPEG. Now we know that we're working in our low-res proxy. It's the correct frame size. It's the correct frame rate. It's got the, the proper audio channels. This was a problem that many of you struggled with before. This new right-click, create proxy, it just kind of works. But you notice you, don't, you have like low, medium, high. You don't really have any choice. And you don't even know what those are necessarily. Now, if we go reveal the proxy in Finder, I can say, I don't even know what resolution this is. I'm guessing it's probably like a 720p, something like, or the equivalent uh, ratio 3840 by 1600, you know, one quarter, one eighth the size, okay? I don't know exactly because it's low, medium, and high. But the point is now, it just kind of does what you want. And then to click back to your native media, I mean, look, it's just, it's just night and day, and there's no relinking. It just works. It just looks awesome. And that's that, okay? And here I can even make it full screen so you can see it better. Here's our native media. Here's our proxy media. Back to native media, okay? I'm gonna go to the uh, chat here for a second. Quinn Stevenson, so much better, yes. Comic Sans, until the day we'll have just K, right. <laughs> JD, what's up? PJ Cassell, hey, how's it going, Tim? What's up? All right. So again, this just, it's just more intuitive. It just makes more sense. But what if you wanna really customize this? What if you wanna be able to add something like an overlay to your proxies? Because while it's really nice, you know, if I'm in 100%, I never work in 100%, especially if I'm gonna be working in 8K or 12K, I'm gonna to need to fit it to the frame. Even if I'm recomposing the shot, I need to see the whole shot. If you've got a 12K massive monitor, you know, good on you. I don't. So I am always basically working in fit. And then maybe I'll switch it to 100% if I'm doing some very intense color correction or something that has like vignetting or something where I'm fading up from black to make sure that I didn't accidentally drop any 8-bit effects in there so that my resolution is suffering. I think you get the idea. What's happening over there on uh, Twitter Periscope? XOXO Steven, Andrew Kearns, Parsa, Praneel, Martin. H learning, Feg Seth, nice to see you, okay? So this is kind of the quick and dirty way to do it. Low, medium, high, you don't really get a lot of choices, but if you don't care and you don't need them and you just want something low and quick and easy, this is gonna work for you. And again, you're kind of scrubbing performance as you're moving through it here. If you were seeing stuttering and issues before, it's going to be better. It's going to work better. It's lighter, it's cleaner, it's easier. Make sure that we're in the proxy there. Um, it's just it's just gonna feel it's gonna feel super smooth, super fluid. There's the H by the way, there's the S1000 for those of you who, who caught it last week. And my all-time, all-time fave, the S950 down there. All right. Sorry for my handheld, slightly stabilized looking. It's not very sharp there, is it? <laughs> Trying to hold the light and the iPhone together was not, not what I was meant to do. Okay, let's talk about customizing and making your own and specifically creating proxy presets. Because if you wanna create a custom proxy preset, this isn't so easy. Now, just to kind of showcase leveraging the ability to add things like overlays, let's click back over to my friend Mike Burton's footage here. So the way that you're gonna do that is you're gonna use Media Encoder. Now, I just wanna, I'm gonna use first Media Encoder from within Premiere to kind of showcase this to you for a moment. So inside of the Media Encoder, you're gonna see that you have this Effects tab. Now, I've talked about this on here before. Now, this is also another great thing that you can do if you're building proxies or intermediate files, um, you know, especially if you're gonna be editing and you're, giving, and you're doing a review for the director or the client or something. You know, most of us, we're, all, we're always shooting uh, super flat, right? So that we can add all the color back in. So you will have the option in your proxy to do something like add a display LUT. 
So if I wanted to, this, this footage already looks somewhat, somewhat treated. I could come in here and on, uh, in the process of creating these, I could add a LUT to this. Now look at how nice that looks, if that's kind of the look you're going for, all right? We could add these different color LUTs to it. Let's try something a little bit more different, like this gold Western, okay? Again, because the client, they don't want to necessarily see flat footage. That may confuse them. Why does it look so blown out or non, you know, there's no contrast. It looks dead, lifeless. What did you do? You know, so depending upon whom you're working with, that you'll, you can decide, you know, what's going to be required there. Let's take that LUT off. We don't need it. Now, you also have the ability here to add things like image overlays. So this is what I typically recommend, re recommend if you're going to be using proxies often. Go into Photoshop, create a ping file in whatever, you know, your native size is, UHD, 2K, 1080, whatever, and just write proxy or throw your logo on there. You know, it's a good way to kind of watermark your footage. That's kind of the idea. Incidentally, you have two methods of doing this. Um, name overlay and image overlay. Name's just going to give you the name of the clips. That's a, that's a pretty telltale sign that they're proxies. But if you want to sort of watermark these, you can add an image overlay. So I'm going to turn that on and click choose. And I did just what I said. I went into Photoshop, typed some text, proxy, erased the background layer, file, export as quick ping, and made this proxy overlay ping file. Click open. All right. And there you have it. And it places, and I chose that color green, by the way. So you this is, you can't change this after the fact. This is baked into that ping with transparency. But what this will ensure here is that these files have proxy sitting on them just like that. Okay. Real simple, real easy. And then you can adjust the position. If you, if you so desire, you can adjust the X, Y offset. You can adjust the size. You can also do this thing, absolute sizing. So this tells you um, regardless of the media size or based on the media size, if you choose absolute sizing, like I built that in 4K, that's, that's a UHD uh, ping. If I put it into a 1080 file, not a proxy, but like an intermediate, that proxy is going to be much bigger, right? It's going to look bigger. If I put it into an 8K one, it's going to be super small. I typically don't choose absolute sizing. And then you can adjust opacity because sometimes, you know, maybe you don't want it to be completely opaque, you want the footage underneath to kind of bleed through. Again, I'm using a super light font anyway. I think this is Futura, so um, it doesn't matter in this case. But if you're using like a big blocky font or you have your logo, some kind of a logo bug, you want the media to, to, to pass through the logo bug, opacity of 50%, 25%, whatever, you know, whatever you desire, just some way so that your editor knows and the people know this is not the master media, okay? So that's what you're going to use the effects, uh, the effects tab for. Let's get out of this and let's move over to media encoder because this is where now we're actually going to build these presets. Now there's two steps involved in building a proxy preset. The first step is that you actually have to create an ingest preset, which may seem counterintuitive. It kind of is. The idea here is that when you build the proxy preset, you're already going to have a preset that you can refer to because you don't have the options of choosing frame sizes and things. You take that from the data created in the ingest preset. So, uh, or rather the, the um, I'm forgetting the name that we refer to it here. Yes, the encoding preset. So we're going to create an encoding preset first with the attributes that we want for the proxy. And that's going to allow us to build a proxy preset, which are then going to export and import into Premiere. It gets a little confusing. Stick with me here. How are we doing in the chat? Mario Ars. That's so awesome. Very cool. Bara R. Cool. All right. GNC. Escara. Martin Mag. Cool. All right. So let's go ahead and create an encoding preset. Now, again, I'm going to work off of this footage that was 4,800 by 2,700 pixels. So let's call this... Um, century 5K proxy. Okay. Format is going to be QuickTime. Based on preset, I don't have one yet. That's what we're doing here. So we're just going to choose our format for this. And I typically like to use LT. You can also use 422 proxy. Again, this is where you have all of these options. 
notice in the in the kind of quick and dirty way, it's ProRes, low, medium, high. Now you can choose whatever codec you want. Some people like using 422. It's still going to be a lot smaller anyway, but just better, you know, it just depends whatever you want. I'm going to use LT, all right? Audio and video, entirely up to you. Effects. So now this is where we're going to bake that proxy overlay into this preset, which we're then going to be able to leverage in the proxy preset as well. So let's go ahead and choose the image overlay. Choose, and we're going to go to that same place. There it is right here, proxy overlay dot ping. Now, do you understand why I showed this to you in Premiere Pro? Because in this view inside of media, we're actually in media encoder here, right? The standalone media encoder. I can't see what that looks like. So I know that it's, I know that it was created properly, but I, you wouldn't be able to see it. So if you start resizing or adjusting, you're doing it blind here. So again, this is one of those things where it kind of a little, a little odd, but that's just how you have to do it for now. All right. So we're just going to add that image overlay. Now, again, if we want to do other things, if we want to add name overlays or time code or any of that kind of stuff, we can do that here. Time code is really common in proxy files as well. So if you wanted to automatically overlay time code of the clip, you can twirl this down. You can enable time code. You can have it take the media time code from the media file or generate it, okay, based on the source of the time code here. Real simple, all right? Whatever you want to do. And then, of course, you have file name overlays. Now we're going to go to the video tab. So again, our codec is 422LT, all right? If you want to keep this the highest, highest, at the highest bit depth possible, that's entirely up to you. But I'm going to uncheck this box here because remember, this is not 1920 by 1080 footage. So we're going to uncheck this for a moment and we're going to type in the actual resolutions because a question that I get all the time is, well, I've got, you know, red 5K, but it doesn't conform to a 16.9. How do I know, how do I make something that's smaller, but maintains the same aspect? Okay, so here's, it's not a trick, it's just, this is how you do it. So you're going to uncheck or disable this maintain aspect ratio while resizing so that you can set the aspect ratio in advance. Once you've done that, now enable it. It locks it together. So if I want to do this, say at one quarter the size, Right? So I'm going to make proxy files that are one fourth the actual resolution of the master to keep it lean and, and clean and smooth and small, easily transferable. Once that's locked, when I type in the width value, it automatically calculates what the height needs to be in and maintaining the same aspect ratio. That one piece of this puzzle probably eludes most newcomers to this process because it's just it's just not super obvious how that's achieved. And as you saw, when I even though I had done like a custom version, it was already checked and it said match source. So you're probably thinking, oh, okay, it's just going to do what I want. If we didn't change that, it would have made a, a, a 1080, a 1080p proxy, which would not have looked correct. It wouldn't have displayed correctly. That's what many of you encountered before. So we're going to change that. Frame rate is fine, field order is fine, all that's the same. If you wanted it maximum bit depth, again, if you're going to be doing any kind of color on this, that's up to you. If you keep it at 8-bit, obviously a little bit smaller, a little bit leaner, a little bit better playback. We're not going to change any of the audio settings. Everything else here, I think, looks good. Century 5K proxy. And we can put this in here. This is a one-quarter sized version of... Uh, for Mysterium 5K, okay? That'll just show up in your comments. You'll also be able to see that detail here inside of Media Encoder. All right, looks good. I'm just making sure I did everything. Okay, and now we can see it right here. <laughs> Century 5K proxy, all right? Nice, okay. Now, at this point, I'm gonna right click on this and I'm going to choose create an ingest preset because all we've actually done now is when we go to media encoder inside of Premiere and we go to QuickTime, this is now going to show up as an exportable format. So remember, you can also manually export proxy, uh, proxies like old school if you want to do that that way, okay? 
But I'm going to show you kind of the more automatic way here where we're getting a little bit more flexibility. <clears throat> Let's create an ingest preset. So this is going to be Mysterium 5K at one quarter size. That's a very long name. Let's just call it Mysterium 5K. Comment one quarter size ProRes LT for proxy. Okay. Transcode files to destination. Now this is just where you want it to go. You'll be able to select this after the fact. Right now I have it going into a folder on the desktop. Don't worry about that. Under format, we're going to choose QuickTime. And now notice the only other option you have is a preset. So when I click the down arrow for the preset menu, this is where now I can choose, ah, my 5K proxy, which is going to make life a lot easier. It's already done. You know it's done properly. All right, all your settings are there. Now, this comes out of the uh, out of using um, Prelude. If you've ever seen this dialogue before here with the transfer, transcode, metadata, and file renaming. So you can also add additional file metadata information here if you want in the proxy. And you can also do renaming here if you so desire. In this case, we've already kind of done this. It's easier. It's just going to work. By the way, the other reason for creating that, um, uh, that other preset ahead of time is like I said, sometimes if you're not doing a whole batch of them, you don't, you don't, you wouldn't go into the proxy window to do it. So it makes sense to have two versions of this. I, I get why they were thinking that. In this case, it's just a little bit easier. And, I, and this is how I typically do it. Now, you could also, in fact, just go into something like 422 proxy. But again, you don't have any of the settings here now. So I don't know what this is necessarily doing, all right? But I know that if I choose Century 5K proxy, I know it's making a 1200 by 675 version, a one quarter version of that master video in the correct aspect ratio with all the correct settings, all right? Click OK, everything looks good, Mysterium 5K. And there it is, OK. Cal is asking, can you have a divided by four and have it calc the new size? Um, you don't have to, because once you type in, again, you could theoretically type in any value when you're creating that encoding preset. And as long as you've locked it after you've changed the, the, the original ratio, it'll maintain, it, it's doing the math for you. So there's no division right there. You could do it, of course, you know, right here in, uh, in, in Spotlight if you want. But right, when you're, when you're modifying the aspect ratio, the frame size in the encoding settings, unlock, put in the master the original size, relock, and then type in whatever size you want to go to. You may have to do manual math to get to that first width uh, setting. OK. So now that we've done this, and this is, again, this is why I'm showing this whole process, because it's a little confusing. Now we actually have to export this, OK, so that we can import it into our ingest panel. So from here, we're going to right click on Mysterium 5K. We're going to choose Export Presets. All right. Let's call this Mysterium 5K. All right, because I'm probably going to use this later. We can tell it where we want it to go. I'll just place it on the desktop. And you see that it's creating a .epr file. Save. All right. So now let's go to, I think I've already got a proxy for this one actually. So let's go to another, another file from this collection. All right. Now I'm going to do this manually first. So I like this one. This is just a really cool shot. So let's go ahead and import this. All right. Now remember, you can set up proxies to happen the moment you begin importing footage when you start the project. I'm going to show you how you do that after the fact in just a second. OK. So here is our, again, this is our, uh, our new piece of content here. Let's go ahead and place this down into the timeline after this biking shot. Place it on its own little uh, track here. 
All right, there it is. Okay, this is a short one. Right click, proxy, create proxy. All right. So again, this is the, the original window where we started. But notice there's a button here. <laughs> Sorry, I desperately needed coffee. Add ingest preset. Click on add ingest preset. Go to the desktop. Mysterium 5K, ingest preset file. That's why you have to do the export out of media encoder. By the way, I get this question all the time. If I already have presets in media encoder, can I just export them and use them in the proxy uh, presets? Yes, you can, but they must indicate under format ingest. Doesn't matter if it's QuickTime, H.264, H.264. Remember, you can use any format when you're building this, right? H.265, DNxHR, DNxHD, Cineform, something else, but it has to say ingest. If it doesn't say ingest, you can export any of these. You can export any of these. But what will happen is, if you try and import them here, it's going to tell you this isn't an ingest preset. This is an encoding preset. You need to make an ingest preset version. <laughs> it can be frustrating. This is where we take deep breaths. All right. Let's go ahead and open that. And there it is. Shows up in the menu. Now remember I told you don't worry about the destination because you'll be able to select it once you actually do it. So this will override where it was going in that preset destination. Next to original media, click OK. All right. Once again, if we click over to meeting code, it's already done. I couldn't even get there fast enough. And you can already see that it's attached. Okay. And notice I'm already in my I'm already in my footage here. So very quickly, non-proxy, proxy, good to go. All right. Simple, clean, easy, just like that. All right. And that's pretty much it. So the process can be a little confusing. But again, there's a big payoff here if you create these in advance, just because you know that they're going to work properly. Now, the other thing, too, to keep in mind, you may have noticed or heard or learned that as of June's release of Premiere, we now support ProRes RAW. In fact, I think you can even see that when we go into, did I just launch something else? I think I did. I did. I just launched After Effects. Sorry. Let me just quit that. Okay. Uh, if we go back to Media Encoder, if we go back into Encoding Preset, for a second here. Oh no, this it's not going to be where where was I looking for it? Uh, it wouldn't encode to that. Where was it showing up? I'm trying to remember where I saw it show up. In any case, we we support ProRes RAW now. So if you're shooting on one of those Atomos devices that supports ProRes RAW, you'll now be able to import that ProRes raw, Pro raw media uh, very, very easily without without issue. Yeah, I'm, I don't know why I'm looking in export. It's not an export format. I don't know where I, where I saw it show up momentarily. By the way, this is the kind of thing I was talking about. These are some of the issues that people would see, right? It's like, why is this pillar boxed? Why, why is it doing this? Because it wasn't conforming to the right aspect or it wasn't, it, it was just the wrong the wrong translation of the frame size because this preset that it chose isn't correct. This was based off of UHD. This is not UHD. Okay. So, and again, if we wanted to do this manually, let's bring in something else here. Let's do uh, another piece of footage. Let's actually grab, let's grab this one just to kind of show you that. Okay, let's export this. And we'll go into Century 5K. Oh, I must have, I don't know why I'm not seeing the proxy overlay. That's weird. Where is it? Hmm, 
I'm not seeing the file. I wonder if I chose the wrong one somehow. Put back later. No, not that folder. Proxies, image overlay. I don't know why it's not displaying all of a sudden. Center. You got me. Well, you saw it work a moment ago. You're just going to have to believe me. I don't know why it's not showing up there. In any case, there's an example of where if you just wanted to run one off and then share a file rather than go through the proxy window, you can do that. Now, here's the other thing you can do. If you've got a lot of media that you want to start importing and you automatically want it to build proxies, you do not have to go one by one. You can simply check the ingest box up here. This is the same as if you had this checked in the project settings, right? So in your project settings, you have three tabs, general, scratch disk, and ingest settings. This is where, again, as you're building your project, ingest, you can choose to copy, copy and create proxy. Again, you could uh, add the ingest preset here. OK, so we would add Mysterium 5K. All right, yes, overwrite it. OK, it's going to create the proxy. Tell it where you want it to go. Click OK. All right. So now if I say, all right, let's bring this piece in and this piece in and this piece in, and I import these, all right, it's importing those files. If I click over to Media Encoder, all right, now it's automatically transcoding this media. Okay, assuming that these are all the same frame size and everything else, they'll look just right. So it's doing it the moment you bring the footage in. So again, you can either do that from the media browser after the fact by checking the ingest box here and then going into your ingest settings. Okay. Or you and notice, yeah, you've got your comment right here. So it tells you exactly what it is. Or you can do it from the master project settings, which you can access again when you're creating the project from the beginning, or you can turn it on after the fact right here, which is nice. All right, very convenient. Okay. Richard Newbury. Oh, very cool. I'm glad. Yeah, it you know, our proxy workflow is wonderful because it's just it's just it's just fast. And again, the best part about it is there's no there's no time loss, you know? That's that's really what I love about it here. And again, you know, if you look at this, again, this is this is 5K, so we're not seeing a huge loss in data here. Go full here. Let's go back to the native version though. And you can see it just sharpens up ever so slightly. All right, back to our proxy. It all just kind of works, okay? This one I think is even more indicative. All right, native proxy. <laughs> even though it was slightly blurry in my native version, you know, you can definitely make out screen function right here, right? <laughs> and if I turn the proxy on, you know, you can kind of still see what that says, but not quite so easily. All right. In my bent, bent footage. Okay. And that is creating proxies and ingest presets. Dare I say the right way, but the slightly more intuitive way. Actually, I don't know if it's more intuitive. It's just that's the way you have to do it. <laughs> All right. So let's click back for a moment here and uh, see if we've got any other questions coming to us. What is up, Stephanie? Stephanie is live. Felt like I lost my voice in recording ADR voiceover for a video production edit. Oh, yeah. Been there. You know, I live in the desert, so I'm, uh, I'm constantly rehydrating. And while I'm, I do a lot of exercises throughout the day, I drink uh, traditional medicinal throat coat tea religiously every evening. Um, but I'm also often doing a lot of singing rehearsal. I, I feel you. It's, uh, it can happen. I, I was doing my, my latest thing. I, uh, many of you know, I like to rediscover my vinyl collection every now and again. And over the last few weeks, I just got really back into Three Dog Night, some, a group that I loved when I was growing up. I just love them again and um, started singing a lot of Chuck, Chuck Negron Three Dog Night songs. We have kind of a similar, similar tenor in some in some parts of tenor, and uh, yeah, I was doing <laughs> I was doing some of his earlier hits. One, 
and Heaven is in Your Mind and a couple others. And I, I, I didn't push it to where I hurt myself, but I could feel like I needed more warm up because I was I was kind of on the edge and uh, didn't didn't want any problems. So I feel you. Take care of yourself, Stephanie. Andres D, how's it going? R.M. Cardenas, nice to see you. Walrus Rinks, nice, wal Walrus, Walrus Winks, nice to see you too. All right, I'm gonna check over on the other channels here. Akash Kumar from India, how are you? Ando Kumson, okay. Hopefully I explained why you would make proxies there. Pravin Sonar, much love, nice to see you. We enjoy every day, hey, great to see you. All right. Did you write this tutorial just to have an excuse to show off the rack of old school equipment? Ha! <laughs> no, you know, I, I truly, I, I just shot that right before just to have a different, an alternative non-native aspect ratio video to show you. Also because it was kind of hard to see in some of the other, in the studio overview from the, a couple weeks ago, all right. Peter, what's up? It'll be automatically accessible um, on the channel right after I stop. You could probably rewatch it now, but yes, it's on, my YouTube channel, as well as on Behance and uh, uh, Adobe Creative Cloud. Kamal, how's it going? Hello, Rick. Thumbs up, nice to see you. All right. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Boo -doo -doo. Was a good friend of mine. Oh, so true. I would belt it out for you, but uh, you know, it's still fairly early in the morning. The other thing, uh, for those of you who are curious, that's really, phenomenal about TDN. Their band was unbelievable. And uh, they did a lot of stuff with Hammond organ. Hold on, let's go turn this on for a second here. They did a ton of stuff with uh, with Hammond organ and I'm, a, I'm an old school Hammond player. Use Hammond in almost all of my, uh, all of my music. And uh, the song Heaven is in Your Mind has a really really phenomenal Hammond part, which is so, so good. So yeah, highly recommend. I also highly recommend Chuck's book, um, Three Dog Nightmare. It is, it is quite possibly one of the most incredible, unreal stories I've, I mean, it, it's, it's just shocking and it's amazing. And the man is still alive today. And it's like, it's, it's a true story of had it all, lost it all and really lost it all, um, including his mind for a brief period and came back, you know, found, found the spirit to come back and just really came back and, and just re reinvented his life. And uh, he's still out there doing his thing. And he just, he just recently got married at 78 or 77 and he's, he's something else and he can still do it. And got back in shape and reach and his voice in some cases is even better and has more range than it did 40, 50 years ago. It's, uh, it's amazing. So yeah, so um, anyhow, anything else here? Steve, I'm glad you're a fan. Let's see if this is... That's really loud. Hold on. Sorry for those of you in headphones, probably just blew you out right there. Oh, you know, I don't have the other camera connected. Hold on. Let's see if I can add that. In our last six minutes, trying to find something to showcase to y'all here. So hold on. What am I doing? No, I don't want that. I'm trying to add another camera come back to this. I never end this early, but you know, 50 minutes on ingest and proxies, that's, that's enough. <laughs> that's definitely enough. Uh, oh, maybe it's, oh, keys cam. There it is. All right. Let's see. I don't know how this is going to look when I bring this in. Yeah. Let's see here. The color might be really off. I'm not going to be able to make all these adjustments, but we'll see. Okay, bear with me here. I must read that. I've experienced something similar. I am Thor. Let me tell you, it is, it is, I, I mean, so it's 460 pages and I'm not like a, I'm not a speed reader um, by any means. I read this thing in like a day and a half. I couldn't put it down. I could not put this book down. The 
I don't want to spoil it for you. Just the, the just the whole thing is just like. And if you've ever known anyone who's experienced any issues with any kind of addiction or dependency or anything, I mean, it is it is not only just an inspirational tale, but it's it's just it's just something else, and it really proves that there is something to the human spirit, and uh, you know, you have to want it. You have to, you have to want to be able to help yourself, and uh, in in a lot of ways, only you can help yourself. But it was, oh my God, just, just incredible. Cody, what is the brand of the blue light that you use in the background? Th this one over here, um, it is that particular one there. The, are you talking about the actual bulb? It's an LED. Um, I used to use the, uh, the Hue bulbs. That's not one of them anymore. Um, what brand is that? I'm having, I'm spacing out. I'll have to get back to you. It's an LED light, but you know, looks like an incandescent light, but it's, it's, it's a blue LED that has uh, multiple levels of, the other thing which you can also see is that I have, it, you can't see it when I switch to this camera <laughs> in a moment here, but um, I also have blue LED projected lights above me here. I'm looking very pink because this is just, I'm, that camera is getting a ton of that pink LED light right in front of you there. Um, but they're, they're really nice and they, they just provide an enormous amount of color. And then, you know, when you look at this again, it's hard to tell because of all the studio lights. But like I said, if you're actually in here without the broadcast lights on, it's a full gradient of color from orange to red to blue to pink. It's, um, it's pretty cool, but I'll find, I'll find out for you, Cody. I can't remember offhand. I am Thor. What is the title? It's uh, Three Dog Nightmare. I think now it's in a fourth edition. I believe it's actually now out of print. The last print edition was in 2017, which is the one I have. I think that was the last one. I found it on eBay. So, some people were selling it for almost in upwards of $100. I got lucky. I found it for about 17 bucks or 22 bucks. And uh, I highly recommend, like, highly recommend it. Not to mention also just the stories about their fame. I mean, 21 consecutive top 20, top 40 hits, 12 gold records and platinum records, three number ones. And there's a, there's a quote in there between 69 and 74, 69 and 74. Basically every three months they had a song in the top 20, which is, you know, and sometimes top 10, top five. It's kind of amazing, you know, really, really impressive. Yes. My ambiance always looks so nice. Oh, thank you. Yes. And again, I apologize. You know, the camera is in my ring light here. So you're getting a lot of this, this weird bleed. But here, let me see if I can. This all... Get inspired by this for a second here. Got three minutes. That's a little of the organ part of uh, Heaven is in Your Mind, a song written by Steve Winwood and members of Traffic can be found on their debut album, Dear Mr. Fantasy, circa 1967, if anyone cares. Mallory Durek, how's it going? Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I could barely hear myself in here, so, but thank you very much, yes. Performances coming soon. You know, now that I have all the keyboard racks set up, I'm ready to, to play live again. So I'll tell you what, friends, I think that's, uh, I think that's going to be it. Zia Nizami, Zia Records. Yes, this is a local, uh, this is a local chain in Arizona. 
I actually worked there very briefly in my paying dues days. If you're in the US, Zia, I could see if I could acquire you a t-shirt. <laughs> All right. We enjoy, ah, uh, thank you so much. What's up, Michelle? Nice to see you as always. All right. So on that note, and yes, Sheridan, we do do music stuff too. We do do, that came out weird. Cornell, thank you. Everyone, have a great weekend. Have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. Coming up next, we've got the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. So stick around for that, and I will see you again next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.